Let's investigate a two qubit example of Grover's search algorithm. First, let's understand this two dimensional geometric visualization. We have vectors living in a two dimensional plane. All of these vectors are normalized, so their length is equal to one. Let's examine the vector that's along the vertical axis. I'm going to label this vector as omega. And I'm putting it inside of a ket. This is Dirac notation for a quantum state. So this visualization represents quantum states as vectors in a 2D plane. But keep in mind that quantum states are actually elements of a Hilbert space. So this is just a useful visualization that's going to help us understand Grover's search algorithm. We're going to apply this algorithm to find this state omega. And what do we mean by finding the state? We mean we are trying to maximize the probability of measuring omega. And for this example in this video, I'm going to uh, let omega be the state 1, 1. So this is one of the computational basis states for a two qubit system. So we've seen the vector that's along the vertical axis. And now let's have a look at the vector that's along the horizontal axis. I'm going to label that as omega with this perpendicular sign. So that's because this vector is perpendicular in this geometric visualization. And in, in the language of quantum mechanics, this is an orthogonal state. So if you take the inner product of omega with this omega perpendicular, you're going to get zero. This state over here, I'm going to label as S. S is a uniform superposition of all of the computational basis states. And if we reflect S over the horizontal axis, we're going to get this vector down here. You can see that this angle is the same, but it's in the opposite direction. It's downwards. So we can actually implement this reflection by applying u omega to s. So this u omega has the effect of reflecting over the horizontal axis. Now that we've labeled this diagram, let's draw a quantum circuit diagram that outlines the procedure that we need to follow to implement Grover's search algorithm. So first we need to specify how many qubits we're dealing with. We're dealing with n equals 2. So this little n is the number of qubits in our register. What about big N? Big N is the dimension of the Hilbert space. So that is 2 to the power of little n. That's 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. We're dealing with a four-dimensional Hilbert space. And it's four-dimensional, so that means it needs four computational basis states to span the entire space. So this is one of those computational basis states. And it's, it's the state that we are looking for. We are searching for this state with Grover's search algorithm. So let's initialize our two qubits. So first, we have the qubits initialized. And we're going to initialize them in the state 0. So both of them are going to be initialized in the state 0. And then our next step is going to be to apply the Hadamard operator, or the Hadamard gate. And that's represented by this h in a box. So when we apply the Hadamard to both of these qubits, which are initialized in the computational basis state 0, we're going to produce s. So the result of this is going to be s. It's going to be a uniform superposition of all of the computational basis states. So at this point over here, we're going to have s. And I will denote that by this. So I'll draw a little dotted line. And at this stage in the quantum circuit diagram, we're going to have the state s over here. So we've taken 0, 0, and we've turned it into s by applying Hadamard to both of the qubits. The next step is going to be to apply u omega. So u omega, in this case, can actually be implemented by applying the controlled z gate. And this is the symbol for the controlled z gate. So 
above this, I'm going to call this u sub omega. And we can refer to this part of uh, the algorithm as the oracle. So there's other ways to define the oracle as well. We could implement another qubit as well when we're defining the oracle. But for our purposes in this video, we're going to define the oracle in this way. What the oracle does is it targets this state over here. The state that we're looking for, it targets it by adding a minus sign in front of it. And we'll see that when we look at the matrix representation of this gate. So that is this u omega. And geometrically on this diagram, it corresponds to the reflection over the horizontal axis. The next step is going to be to apply us. And us is a reflection over the s axis. So we're going to take this state at the bottom and we're going to reflect it over the s axis. And that's going to get us up to the top on the vertical axis. So that is one Grover iteration. And in this example, we only need to do one iteration. And that will get us onto the vertical axis. And it will maximize the probability of measuring the state 1, 1, which is the target state. So let's see how we can implement this reflection over the s axis. First, we're going to apply some Hadamards. So we apply a Hadamard to both of the qubits. The next step is going to be to apply the Pauli Z gate to both qubits. So we have a Z and we have another Z over here. And then we're going to apply the controlled Z gate again. So that's the same gate that we used to uh, implement the Oracle. And then we're going to finish off by applying some Hadamards again. So Hadamard on both of these qubits. So this collection of gates implements the reflection over the S axis. And finally, we're going to measure the qubits. So we need to perform a measurement. And this is the symbol for measurement. So when we perform the measurement, we turn this qubit, which is represented by a single line, into a classical bit which is represented by a double line. So over here, we're still dealing with a quantum state. And then when we perform the measurement, we get classical bits. So we get either 0 or 1 in both of these cases. So let's label this diagram. All of this part over here, this is u sub s. So that is the unitary operator, which implements a reflection over the s axis. And once we've applied u omega to s, we're down here. And then when we apply u s, we're going to get up to the vertical axis. So this state over here, before measurement, this state is u s, u omega applied to s. So that's the state that we're going to measure. And can you see what this Grover iteration has done? We have one iteration over here, and it has turned s into this. And the order in which these unitary operators appear in this equation is separate, uh, is, is actually opposite to how they appear in this quantum circuit diagram. That's because we first apply this state on the right, and then we apply this state on the left. And that's opposite to the convention that we have in the quantum circuit diagram. Here, we go from left to right. So first we apply these operators on the left, and then we work our way towards the right. So that is just a convention. You could also change the convention and start from the right and go all the way to the left. So now that we've drawn this quantum circuit diagram, which outlines all of the gates that are needed to implement Grover's algorithm for this example, uh, we can analyze all of these unitary operators and these states. The first state that I want to analyze is S. I want to see how we can create S and what are the different representations for S. So S is formed by applying this Hadamard tensor product with itself. So this notation over here, we have a tensor product then a 2. This is telling us we have Hadamard tensor product with Hadamard. So we have two copies. And if we had, uh, in general, little n copies, we would write little n up here. And we're applying this operator to the state 0, 0. So this notation is the same as what we have up here. We have the computational basis state 0 for the first qubit 
and for the second qubit. And we can write that like this. So this is the same as applying the Hadamard to zero, that's for this subspace, and then applying the Hadamard to zero in the other subspace. So I'm putting brackets over here, so we clearly see we have a Hadamard acting on this zero, and a Hadamard acting on this zero. So what is this equal to? Well, when the Hadamard acts on an eigenbasis state of the Pali Z operator, it changes it to an eigenbasis state of the Pali X operator. So that's going to look like this. We're going to have 1 on the square root of 2 times the sum of 0 and 1. And then we're going to have another copy of the same thing in the other subspace. So this is sometimes denoted as the plus state. If you, are, uh, if you were to act on this zero state with the Pali Z operator, that would give you an eigenvalue of plus one. So this is an eigenstate of the Pali Z operator. And this state over here, the superposition of zero and one, that is an eigenstate of Pali X. And if you act with Pali X in this state, you get an eigenvalue of plus one as well. So now that we have this over here, we can expand this out. So I'll write another version of S underneath. We can write this as one half by grouping these normalization coefficients together. And then we're going to have four terms. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and finally 1, 1. This 1, 1 state is the state that we're looking for. We're trying to maximize the probability of measuring that state. There are several ways we can write this. We can express this as 1 over the square root of 4, 4 is the dimension of the Hilbert space, times the sum over x, and I'll use this notation where we have zeros and ones being used to construct strings of length 2, and these guys are going to be the labels of the states x. So you can see that uh, there are four options for this. We have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So this 2 means that the length of this string is 2, and we are using 0 and 1 to construct all four of these options. So that is one way of expressing this in a more condensed notation. Another way would be to label these guys. We could label these states differently. We could say that this is uh, 0, this is 1, this is 2, and this is 3. And then we can express this as 1 over the square root of, let's write this as 2 squared, where this little 2 up here is this little n. It's the number of qubits we're dealing with. And then we can write this as the sum from x equals 0 up to 2 to the 2 minus 1. And I'll write x over here. So then the labels of these computational basis states are 0, 1, 2, and 3. And you can see that 2 squared minus 1, that's 3. 3 is 1 less than a power of 2. So these are different ways of expressing S. Now, another thing that I want to do is express S in terms of this geometric picture. So S, we can write as having a horizontal component, which if we look at this diagram, S has a horizontal component that's given by cosine of pi on 6. This is 30 degrees. So that this, this angle is written in radians. And this is going to multiply the horizontal state. And for the vertical component, we're going to have sine of pi on 6. And that multiplies this vertical state over here. So what are these values equivalent to? Well, this is the square root of 3 on 2, and the sine evaluates to 1 half. So we have 1 half. So these are the coefficients, and we get this from this geometric picture over here. And we can also rewrite this in a more suggestive form. We can rewrite this as the square root of 1 minus 1 over 4. So that is our horizontal component. And our vertical component is equivalent to 1 over the square root of 4. So why am I writing it like this? Well, 4 is big N. It is the dimension of the Hilbert space. So this over here is the probability amplitude. If we square this value, we get the probability 
of measuring omega if the system is prepared in the state S. Uh, another thing that I want to uh, notice, uh, I want you to notice over here, is that this satisfies the normalization condition. If we take the square of this and add it to the square of this, we're going to get one. And we can also see that from a trigonometric identity. If we take cosine squared and sine squared, it's going to be equal to one. So now let's also write this angle over here. We have omega perpendicular. We can write that as one over the square root of three times zero zero plus zero one plus one zero. So I'm excluding the state one one, which is this, the state up here. And if we exclude it, then we have something which is orthogonal. So if we take the inner product of this with one one, we're not gonna be able to find one one in this sum. And that means it's going to evaluate to zero. We can write this in another form. We can write this as one over the square root of two to the two minus one. So that's what this three is. It's one less than the dimension of the Hilbert space. And then we're going to have the sum over all values of x that are not equal to omega. And I'll put x over here. So omega is one one, and we're including all of them. And when we exclude all of, uh, when we exclude this omega and only include all the values that are not equal to omega, we have to readjust this normalization coefficient. And that's why we have to subtract one over here. So this ensures that the state is normalized. An important observation that I want to make is that at the beginning over here, when we have the system prepared in the state S, if we take the inner product of omega with S, and then we take the absolute value squared of that, that's going to give us one on four. So you can see that in this expression over here. So the inner product of the state that we're looking for and this uniform superposition, when we take the absolute value squared of that, it gives us this probability of measuring omega. And you can see that the probability is one quarter. And that's the same as the probability of measuring all of the other states. So in this form over here, we haven't maximized the probability of measuring the state we're looking for. If we want to do that, well then, what we need to do is take the absolute value squared of the inner product of omega with this state, u s, u omega, and I'm gonna put s over here. So this is actually equal to one. So it's not always equal to one in, in general for Grover's search algorithm. But in this case, we only need one iteration and we can get a probability of one. So this state, this is the state of the system before measurement. If we take the inner product with omega, and then take the absolute value squared, we get the probability of measuring omega in this state. And that's equal to one. That's because this is actually omega. This state is equal to omega. So let's see why that's true. First, we need to analyze this unitary operator and this unitary operator. Let's write down u omega. So u omega is equal to the controlled Z gate, right? CZ for controlled Z. This is a diagonal matrix with entries one, 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 minus one. So what does it do? This is our oracle. It marks the one, one state. So this last entry over here corresponds to the one, one state. It puts a minus sign on that one, one state, which identifies it as the target of our search. And we can also write this in a more suggestive form, we can write this as a diagonal matrix. So this D is for a diagonal matrix. We can write this as minus one to the power of zero, minus one to the power of zero, minus one to the power of zero, and then minus one to the power of one. And these exponents over here, they are the outputs of a function which encodes all the information of the oracle. So it's zero for all values that are not equal to omega, and then it turns on, it turns into one over here, which turns on the minus sign. And that's associated with one, one. That's the target state. Another interesting thing that I want to write down is what is the matrix representation of Z tensor product Z? We can write that concisely as Z with a tensor product, then a two. So that's Z tensor product with another Z. And that's going to give us the diagonal matrix with entries one, minus one, minus one, and one. You can see a Pauli Z over here, and then a minus Pauli Z. 
So now that we have this and that we have u omega, let's examine u sub s. So I'll write u sub s down here. So what is u sub s? From this diagram, we're implementing it by applying the Hadamard to both qubits. And we are then applying this z to both qubits. And then we are applying control z. And finally, we're applying another Hadamard. So it's actually a Hadamard sandwich of this thing in the middle. And this thing in the middle is equivalent to, just write this Hadamard, it's equivalent to two times the projector associated with the zero, zero state minus the identity, which I'll write a four over here. This is a four by four matrix, and it's an identity matrix. And then we have another Hadamard on this side here. So we have a Hadamard sandwich of this object. And what is this equal to? If we act uh, from the left with a Hadamard and from the right with a Hadamard, we're going to turn this 0, 0 into S. That's exactly what we have expressed in this relationship. So that means we're going to get 2 times the projector for S, and then we have to subtract off the identity. So that's what we're dealing with here. And uh, what, how is this identity appearing here? Well, if you take the Hadamard on both sides of the identity, you can ignore the identity, and then you just have the squared of this Hadamard. And if you square the Hadamard, you get back the identity. So that explains this relationship. And this form over here tells us that we're doing a reflection over the S axis. So this is specifically the identity operator for a four-dimensional Hilbert space. So this is US. But what I want to do is verify why this is equal to this. So I'll do that underneath. This object over here has the matrix representation, which we can get by multiplying this matrix representation and this matrix representation. So what we're going to get is plus 1 followed by minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. So this plus 1 over here is from this plus 1 and this plus 1. And all of the other terms have 1 minus 1, which flips the sign. So that's what we've got in this relationship here. And now let's verify that that's equal to this. So we have 2 times this projector, which is 1, 0, 0, 0. And then we subtract off the identity, which is 1, 1, 1, 1. That's what we're dealing with here. So the identity matrix is just a diagonal of ones. And these guys are all negative. So that explains these three terms over here, because we have zeros. And then this first term, we have 2 minus 1, which is plus 1. So it does work out this object over here, this operator, is exactly the same as this operator. And they're both sandwiched between these Hadamards. And these are tensor products of Hadamards. So we have a Hadamard applied to both qubits. And that's equivalent to this reflection. So now that we've explicitly written out what u omega and u s are, and we know what s is, and we know what all of these states are, let's write down a uh, matrix multiplication that tells us the net effect of this Grover iteration. So I'll write that at the bottom. What we're going to have is u s u omega acting on s. This is equivalent to, we could write this out as a bunch of 4x4 four four matrices and multiply those 4x4 four four matrices. But it is actually more convenient to deal with this two-dimensional diagram over here. So if we do that, we can think of this Grover iteration, so all of, all of this step over here, we can think of that as a rotation by 60 degrees or pi on three radians, because the net effect of these two reflections is a rotation of 60 degrees towards the vertical axis. And we can express that as a matrix. And that matrix is going to have entries, cosine of pi on three, sine of pi on three, minus sine of pi on three, cosine of pi on three. And we're going to be acting on this state, and we can express that state as cosine of pi on 6 sine of pi on 6. So this is the geometric representation of S. You can see the angle over here is pi on 6, that's 30 degrees, and we're breaking it up in terms of cosine and sine. So the basis that we're dealing with here 
is this horizontal state and this vertical state. They are forming our basis to construct these matrix representations. But keep in mind that this is not the entire Hilbert space. This is just a two-dimensional plane, which is a visualization of states that live in a four-dimensional Hilbert space. So now that we have this rotation matrix and this state, let's evaluate all of these entries. So we're going to get one half root three on two minus root three on two and one half. So this square matrix is going to multiply this column vector, which has entries root three on two, one half. And what does this evaluate to? Well, we're going to get over here in this top entry, we're going to get root three on four, that's this one half times this root three on two. And uh, on this other entry, we're gonna have minus root three on four. And what about this bottom entry? We're going to get three on four, and then we're going to get one on four. So we're just squaring these values. And this simplifies to zero and one. And what does this actually mean? This means, I'll write this out more explicitly below here. So what we're doing is we're acting with a rotation matrix, which rotates pi on three radians in the positive direction. So that's from the horizontal axis up to the vertical axis. And we're taking this rotation operator and we're acting on the state S. And that gives us this state over here, which is zero times the horizontal state and one times the vertical state. So that's just the same as this vertical state, omega, which is equal to one, one. So we have shown using this geometric re representation that applying this rotation to S is equivalent to the state one, one. So we have maximized the probability of measuring the state one, one. This is a successful implementation of Grover's search algorithm. And we've seen it for an, a two qubit example. We could also uh, have other choices for this omega. We could choose different computational basis states to be our omega. And what would, what would the other versions of this circuit look like then? Well, we'd have to implement a different oracle. And if we look down over here in this uh, definition of u omega, we would have to put this exponent of one on a different location in this, this matrix over here. So that means we would define the function for the oracle differently. So that is how you would specify which is the target state. And you can see that in this special example, you only need one Grover iteration. So that's the application of u omega and u s to maximize the probability. And in this example, we get a very nice result because the probability is equal to one. So that means if you measure the system after performing this procedure, you are guaranteed to get the, the state you are searching for. It's not always that convenient because sometimes the probability is close to one, but it's not quite equal to one. But because the angles are really nice in this diagram, that's because uh, 30 degrees and 60 degrees add up to 90 degrees, you get a very nice result. So this was Grover's search algorithm applied to a two qubit example.